guys, welcome to my art channel. Thanks for stopping by to make some art with me. Um, for more free art lessons, you could press the button below and subscribe right there on that red button. And I will see you really soon. Now let's get to making some art. Bye bye. Hi guys, welcome. Today we are doing um, a little bit of pop art inspired by Wayne Tebow, who was an American pop artist who was inspired himself by things like cafeterias and diners and especially pastries and cakes and cupcakes, my favorite things. So today we are going to do a Wayne Tebow inspired slice of cake out of paper, so it's gonna be a paper sculpture. What you're going to need is a piece of white cardstock, and we're gonna cut it into a strip that is three and a half inches wide by 11 inches long. You'll need a ruler, a pencil, um, you'll need some magic markers, a scissor, if you have sequins or glitter, uh, that's how we're gonna decorate our cake. If you don't have sequins or glitter, you can actually use some salt, which will make the nice sprinkles on top. Um, you'll need some, we're using watercolor, regular magic markers, not permanent. So you're gonna also need some water and a paintbrush, um, glue, and a glue stick if you have it, okay? Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is you're gonna cut your strip of paper, make it three and a half inches wide by 11 inches long. Most printer paper, or actually this is cardstock, comes eight and a half by 11, so you should just have to make one cut. After you've made that cut, you're gonna take a pencil and a ruler, I'm going to do it in Sharpie so you can see it, but you can do it in pencil. And you're going to take your ruler and you're going to match the end to the zero. And you're going to count in four inches. And you're going to just make a little line at four inches. And then you're going to do that on the other side. You're going to go from the edge, put it on zero and then make a little notch at four inches because we're gonna have to fold this piece of cardstock to make our slice of cake. So that's what we're going to do first. Next, you can put that away. You have to decide if you wanna make a chocolate cake or a strawberry cake or I'm gonna make a vanilla cake with chocolate frosting on the inside, kind of just like this one. And the way to do that is first, you have to choose your markers. So if you're gonna make, say, chocolate cake with raspberry filling, you're gonna need some brown markers and some purple and pink markers. So I chose some light brown markers to do my sponge vanilla cake and two different darker brown markers to make the chocolate filling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the chocolate filling, when you have a cake, usually goes straight through the center of the cake. Whoops. So I'm going to just make a line straight through, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It could be a little bit wavy, because chocolate frosting is never wavy, or, or is never perfect, right? And I'm going to make my frosting probably about the width of two fingers, right in the middle. And I'm making straight lines across like that, and it's gonna be the width of about two fingers, but I'm gonna mix in two different colors. So I'm using that reddish color, and I'm also gonna use a darker color. Because I'm gonna go back in it in the end and use some water on it to turn these markers into like watercolor paints. So 
So I've made my first, um, the frosting in the middle of the cake, that's going to go in the cake. And next, I'm going to make my cake. And when, if you've ever looked closely at a cake, a piece of cake, You'll notice that there's like little tiny holes, like air bubble holes in there that happen from cooking. So a cake is not just a solid line. So what I'm going to do to make that type of texture is I'm going to make dots. And I'm also going to make tiny circles um, throughout. And I'm going to do this on top of that chocolate frosting line and on the bottom. And I don't know if you'll be able to see what I've done. Let's see if I can get that really close to the camera. And you can see those dots. And, I, and some are bigger and some are smaller. So I'm going to continue doing that. And adding some little tiny circles to show the air bubbles in the cake and to give the cake texture so it looks more realistic. And in some areas I'm going to have, they're going to be more condensed and filled with dots and some are going to be more open. Something like that. Hopefully you could see that. Give an idea of what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the chocolate. The other side of the chocolate frosting strip there. Who doesn't love a piece of cake? So Wayne Tebow, the, he was a pop artist, he was around the same time as say Roy Lichtenstein and Andy Warhol, who are other pop artists. And part of the pop art movement was taking everyday objects and turning them into art, such as a delicious piece of cake, or a cupcake, or like Andy Warhol, he took Campbell soup cans and turned them into art. And Roy Lichtenstein took the idea of newspaper type of comic strips, strips and turned them into giant paintings. So pop art really focuses in on popular culture and objects. So today, if you were a pop artist, what type of things might you take and create into a piece of art? Maybe like an iPhone could become some type of piece of art somehow. Something to think about. Okay, so I have filled out on the top and the bottom of my chocolate frosting here. And I'm going to now take my paintbrush and this is only going to work if you use uh, water-based markers. This does not work with permanent markers. I'm going to take some water and I am just going to try and spread some of that chocolate frosting and mix those colors. And I'm also going to use it to take those dots and have them like spread the ink a little bit and so it gives the paper a little bit of color. I still want, because I'm doing a vanilla cake, I still want it to be light but I don't want it to be white and by using the uh, water over the watercolor markers it kind of gives it more of a, a yellow, light yellow tinge to it.
just slightly and that's all I want is just a slight tinge and if you you're making a chocolate cake you're going to do the same thing and you'll see that it gets a darker color so I've just used a little bit now um, the paper, as you can see, is starting to curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of paper and put it on top of it. And then i got to find a book. I'll be right back. I didn't find a book, but I found my oil pastels. And I'm just going to put it on top of here and let that paper dry with my box of pastels over it so it helps flatten the paper. When the paper's dry, we're ready to do the next part. So let your paper dry and I'll be back in a few minutes. So we are back and let's check our paper. And it has dried pretty flat, which is what we wanted. So I can put this aside. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are actually going to fold our piece of cake. So you're going to turn over your paper and remember where I drew those lines before at the four inch from either side, either end? So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna do this in marker so you can see, and I'm gonna draw a line across. Sorry. So this is four inches in from this edge, and this line is four inches in from this edge. Now I'm going to bend these lines, and the best way to get a nice, neat fold in your paper is to put the ruler right at the line. My line is right here on the top edge of the ruler, and I am going to just bend that paper right over the ruler, and I could take uh, my pen that's closed and just get a nice crease over there like that okay now once I take it off the ruler I could take my pen again I always use a pen because it gives it more force than my finger and makes it a nice neat crease, which is what you want when you're working with paper and sculpting with paper. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna put my ruler right at that line, and I am going to bend the paper over. I'm going to bend the paper and you can make sure that everything is nice and neat by making sure that when you fold the paper over everything lines up and it's nice and neat nothing's going over the edges the neater your folds when you do things like paper sculpture or origami the neater your folds and the tighter the creases of your folds the better um, piece of artwork you you'll have in the in the end and the easier it will be to work with the artwork. So neatness and sharp creases on your folds are important. That's why I keep my marker handy so I can get that nice sharp crease. See, now uh, you can see that it's already forming the triangle that I'm gonna need for my piece of cake, okay? Now, to put the cake together, I'm gonna take these two ends and I could do a number of things. I could glue it together here, you could staple it, you can use tape. Okay, I am going to use my glue stick. Um, I prefer when working with paper to use a glue stick when uh, connecting pieces of paper together. When I did the sprinkles on this, I used a liquid glue because I need the glue to spread out more. The glue stick is very easy to use. It's very neat. It doesn't bend the paper because it's not that liquidy and it dries super, super quick. So I'm going to just make sure I match the edges so it's nice and neat. 
I'm gonna hold it together for a minute. And then my piece of cake is glued together. So I'm gonna put that aside to dry. The next thing we're gonna do is that drippy, delicious frosting that goes on the top of the cake. So the way to do this is I'm gonna use just a color piece of construction paper or color printer paper. If all you have is colored cardstock, you can use that. And I'm going to take my piece of cake, I'm going to put it kind of towards the middle. I know I don't like to waste too much paper, but we have to make the drip, so we need a lot of room. The first thing I'm going to do with my pencil is I'm going to trace my piece of cake. So I get an idea of how big it is. So that looks like my piece of cake. Now I would suggest that you do this with pencil, not marker. I just want you to be able to see it. From here, I have to draw the drips of the cake, of the cake frosting. So when I cut it and fold it, it'll fold over the sides. So I'm gonna just make these drippy kind of lines. And you can make your drips as long or as short as you want, how much frosting is gonna drip off the top of your cake. So see how I did that? I'm also gonna do it on the other side. Like so. And then I'm going to do it on the back side because when I frost a cake, I like the frosting to drip all over. I like lots of frosting. So I'm going to put it over on this side as well. Like that. And this is done just very free. Just think about how frosting looks when it's dripping. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut out only the outside, those, those drippy lines. I'm not gonna cut this out. This is gonna be what I use to make my folds. So it's really important that you do yours in pencil because if you are using paper, it might show through. It's actually not showing through too bad right now, but. There'll be a lot of twisting and turning when you're cutting with this. Now, if you're not cutting your drips exactly as you have drawn them, that's okay. Because if you look closely, I've gone over the lines a little bit, that's okay, they're still gonna look great. It's just really a guide. And you could use paper for the frosting that looks like frosting, vanilla or you know, like a white or a manila color paper or a brown paper for chocolate or strawberry frosting. I like bright colors, so, and also I want this to look like pop art as much as I want it to look like a piece of cake. 
So that's why I chose a bright poppy color. Okay, so I have my piece cut out, my frosting cut out. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. Now those lines that we drew, that triangular line that we traced the cake, we are going to fold the paper on those lines. So you could actually use, take your ruler and put it on one of those lines and start folding over it. It makes it a little bit easier to fold over those lines like that. And you're going to fold it down. And you're going to do that on all three sides. And again, you can fold it against the ruler and it makes the folding go much easier. So to do that, you're just going to put the ruler up against the line, kind of like the same exact way, actually, that we did this one. You put it right up against the line and you fold the paper over it. Okay, and then when you're done, we're going to get a nice crease, which is super important. Once you do the fold, you make a nice clean crease on there. And I'm going to do that on all three sides. I'm just going to go in there and work on that crease. when I put my frosting on my piece of cake it's going to fit pretty well might not fit perfectly but it'll fit pretty well so let's see how we did oh, there we go okay so see how I got my frosting it just kind of fits on there like, like a lid or a hat <laughs> and now I need to glue this on and I'm going to use again I'm going to use my glue stick because if I use um, more liquid glue with paper stuff it tends to wrinkle the paper um, which I don't like so what I'm going to do to make it easier is I'm going to just glue the back part first in one shot like that I'm going to have to put my hand inside to kind of balance everything. And I'm just going to press it down like that. So this piece of frosting is kind of dripping over the cake and sticking out. I could leave that, um, but because I drew in black marker, it shows, so I'm actually going to trim that excess piece. I think you might be able to see it better here. So I'm just going to trim that like that. I'm going to push this down, make sure the glue is sticking, which it is. And then I'm going to pull down the, these sides here. Now the one thing with glue stick is you have to work a little more quickly than liquid glue because it'll dry. So if you take too much time painting on the glue, by the time you get to the last piece, the first piece that you glued will be, the glued on will be dry. So you have to work a little bit quickly. And I'm going to do the same thing with my hand inside. I'm going to be able to push against here. So this one might need a little more glue, let's see. So I have a couple pieces that are popping out, that's okay, I'm just going to trim them. Anything's popping out of the edges. So that's looking pretty, oh I love the way that looks. And who doesn't love purple frosting? 
So I think this piece needs a little more glue. I didn't put enough glue on there. And I'm going to go to my last side. And I'm going to glue those pieces again. Again, I'm going to try and work quickly so my glue doesn't dry. Before I get it Oops, on there. Press that down using my nail to kind of flatten the glue. And any piece that's sticking out, like this one, I'm just going to trim it right at the edge. There we go. That looks super cute. Nice and neat. So I'm going to put that aside and actually I'm going to use this because I'm going to use some sequins. Now on the top, when you have like sprinkles on something, they're not perfectly neat. So we're just going to put some glue, liquid glue. I'm just going to spread it around on top. You can do it more um, orderly and neatly if you like. I like to make it look like it's a random spill. Again, you could do this with glitter and you could also do this with uh, salt because that will come up with like a nice little shiny look if you don't have any glitter or sequins and anything extra. And there's the glitter for the top of my cake. And here you have it my Wayne Tebow inspired piece of cake. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you really soon. Bye bye.